Hi guys, welcome back to my channel and to a brand new video. Today I have something that I haven't done before, but I really wanted to do for a long time, which is comparing books to video games. And specifically, I'm going to be doing cozy Switch games today because I've barely been reading recently and I've been totally obsessed with my Switch and getting back into the games that I've been kind of neglecting for a good while. So I was just sat there thinking, oh, I'm loving these games. This, And then I was looking at one game, I was like, this totally gives me the vibes of this book. And I thought that'd be such a good idea. Not that it's revolutionary. I think this trend went around on YouTube last year, so I'm just well behind on the times. But I just really fancy doing it. If you like this video and you would like more like it, I have an even longer list of games. I have to choose which ones to prioritize for this video. Or if you'd like one compared to movies or TV shows, let me know because I had a lot of fun preparing this. And I actually have 11 pages of notes on this laptop that I made for this video. So I'm definitely into it. So if you want more videos like this, just let me know. I'm going to jump straight into it with my first recommendation. The first book I want to talk about today is Before the Coffee Gets Cold by Toshikazu Kawaguchi. This is a beautiful story set in a coffee shop that's magical and allows its patrons to travel back in time to visit other patrons of the coffee shop in a previous timeline. Sadly they can only stay there for such a short period of time until the mug of coffee gets cold uh, but we follow a cast of characters who utilize this option. This is usually to, used to contact a past loved one or um, a relative who's passed on so the story is absolutely heartbreaking but so mesmerizing and so beautifully written. There's just something about it that just captures your heartstrings Oh, I just absolutely love this book and this whole series actually. There's like three books now. I just feel like this book is so eloquent with its discussions of grief and acceptance and coming to terms with these things that when I found a game that was so well matched to this story and how it made me feel, I was ecstatic. I couldn't believe it. So the game that I'm choosing to match this book is Spiritfarer. In Spiritfarer is a cozy management game where you play as Stella who ferries around the deceased and you're ferrying them to the afterlife so you can imagine the heartbreaking themes that are going to come into this story. You have a pet cat with you on the boat and he helps you in your like daily tasks of like farming, mining, foraging, building, crafting, fishing, upgrades to the boat. It helps you with everything. There's so much to do in this game but alongside these tasks you uncover more of the story of each passenger that boards your ship and their backgrounds, what happened to them in life, why they've died. Quite a sad story and inevitably then at the end you have to say goodbye to their spirit, which wow. The game is just so brilliant, the map is extensive and the world is beautiful and there's never ending upgrades that you can make to your boat which makes this game so enjoyable because there's just so much to do. Um, I feel like I've gotten so many hours out of it already and I'm not even like at the end. But alongside all the fun that you get out of it, it has this storyline that basically rips your heart out and stomps on it. So basically before the coffee gets cold. <laughs> I always feel like even though it's so much pain, I always wanna go back for more. And if you enjoyed the emotional turmoil that before the coffee gets cold brought you, then you're gonna love Spiritfarer. So good luck. Moving on to a more lighter note, we have Sheets by Brenna Thumler. This is a graphic novel story following Marjorie, who runs her family's laundrette. She's bored of her daily routine, she finds it repetitive, she says she does the same thing every day, and she actually refers to herself as feeling as though she's a ghost walking through life. Then, one day, she actually meets a real-life ghost, Wendell, who unfortunately is a young boy and had his life taken from him at a very young age, and he's kind of struggling to grasp the concept of death and the fact he is dead. And he uses the sheet from the laundrette as his identity. He walks around in a sheet. So he kind of looks like the stereotypical ghost costume that we see. But the two end up meeting and bonding and forming a really great friendship that comes with a lot of ups and downs. But it just kind of shows the true meaning of life, even though one of them is no longer alive. This is a beautiful graphic novel with beautiful art style. Very unique. There's two books in it. I can't remember if the second book is the last book or not. And it's a really great one for referring back to grief. Kind of similar on the wavelength of Before the Coffee Gets Cold and Spiritfarer, but in a more accessible way and maybe less harsh way. <laughs> now similarly to this book we have Lemon Cake which is where you have to restore a bakery that is inhabited by Mrs Bon Bon, a ghost, the, pre the previous owner of the bakery, but she won't leave even though she's dead. But she complains that she cannot touch anything therefore cannot run her bakery anymore, so we do it for her. 
So you do everything in this game, from being in the greenhouse, growing your own crops, care taking care of the animals, to being in the kitchen, you're actually prepping the ingredients, you're putting them in the oven, to then taking the food to front of house and serving the customers, filling the display cases. You do everything. You plan the menu, but for the day, plan your tips, make sure you get in the right revenue. It's the perfect management simulation game. However, this game sounds cute and cozy and looks cute and cozy in the trailer. It is deceivingly stressful. Oh my goodness, you're out there trying to just bake your goods while the ru the lunchtime rush is running wild. It's non-stop and you just cannot keep up with it. I just love at the beginning of every day I'm setting up my menu, I'm looking at the new cats that are available for adoption before unsuccessfully trying not to run out of display cases by 11am right before the lunchtime rush. <laughs> inevitably run around like an idiot until 4pm when the cafe closes. It is a good game, I promise, just maybe not one for right before bed because the stress it induces would probably give you nightmares. Next we have House of Salt and Sorrow, which is a 12 dancing princesses retelling that contains a magical world filled with portals, leading to worlds that are more, well, better than our own. Filled with elegant balls, gods, demons, creatures you don't know who you're dancing with and this is just such a beautifully written story that i just know so many people love the the vibes of but didn't quite love the story the vibes of this are amazing with the gothic mansion i just oh i love that mansion and the discussions of the mansion amazing it's really hard to speak about this book in particular without spoiling anything because the synopsis is so brief it's like <laughs> like a couple of sentences so i'm gonna keep it brief with this one and just know if you like gothic style books historical gothic this is the game for you and that is going to be graveyard keeper also a game for you if you love stardew valley because this is basically the same game but much darker uh, and medieval following a car accident in present day you suddenly wake up to consciousness in a medieval town where you are the new graveyard keeper expected to manage and deal with the day-to-day -day runnings of this graveyard including dealing with the bodies and ethical and moral decisions such as is it okay to sell human meat as burgers to the local inn to save some cash probably not but needs must gather resources farm craft fish take on the local dungeons if you at all enjoyed the gothic vibes of house of salt and sorrow you are definitely going to enjoy the vibes of this which somehow manages to stay cozy while you're sitting and embalming bodies and throwing them in the lakes and the rivers if it can do that then it can do anything i will say this is a very hard game to navigate you will need to get up the graveyard wiki because I didn't understand where that was going on and I felt like it gave me nothing. It just threw me in the deep end. But it's worth it when you get to grips with what you're doing. Next we have Gallant, which was understandably a lot of people's favourite book. As you follow Olivia, she goes back to her family manor, Gallant, where her mother told her never to go. And Olivia has this special talent where she can see ghosts and Gallant certainly isn't short of any of these. So she experienced a lot of them. Involving mysterious portals to alternate realities, spooky ghosts and an isolated setting this is the perfect book to match the game cozy grove now cozy grove isn't a scary book as such it's not quite as spooky as gallant but it is an isolated setting you play as a spirit scout who was left behind by her sp scout group on an island inhabited by many ghosts you camp on this island which changes as the story progresses you can forage fish mine craft and trade throughout the island in a very Animal Crossing-esque style. The main focus of the game, however, is to befriend the local ghosts and aid them in quests, which will lead to uncovering more about their pasts and who they are. Some of these stories, similarly to Spiritfarer, are really quite heartbreaking, but not to the same extent. Unlock more ghosts as you progress through the game, and also more island space, which you can decorate to your liking. This is the perfect game to play before bed because the game gives you about 30 minutes of gameplay a day before you kind of expect it not to play it anymore. You can fish, forage and mine for as long as you like though. You can continue to gather materials, but the quests only last a short amount of time, making this the perfect game to play before you go to bed every day. And to me, the ultimate cozy game is one I can play in bed. A book I recently read was This Poisoned Heart by Kaylin Bayron, and one that I fell in love with, especially with Brisis and the Poison Garden, of course. So Brisis moves in with her two mums to the manor that her biological mother owns after she died, and here Brisis starts to uncover some mysteries regarding a talent that she has. This talent is that she can grow plants with her bare hands, it's like she's in control of them, 
And being somewhere here, like now coming from New York City, where she has all these plants and all this space and garden to practice with, she's delighted. But then she comes across this poison garden. And luckily, because of her talent, the poisons have no effect on her. But she wants to know why there is a poison garden. And then she uncovers a hidden old school apothecary. She realises that this her family has been providing elixirs to people across the town. And now Brucis wants to like uncover the legacy and continue her parent her mother's work and reopens the apothecary. The vibes of this book are immaculate. It basically focuses on gardens, small towns, and of course potions, which are all things I love. And you can basically be Brucis by playing Potion Permit. This game is set in a town called Moonbury, and you play as a chemist who creates potions to heal those within the town. Your role consists not only of diagnosing those with illnesses, but then also creating the cures from scratch. From gathering and brewing to building relationships with the town folk, upgrading your tools, going fishing, and playing with your pet dog, up decorating your home, you are in control of everything. My favourite thing about this game is that there are absolutely no time limits. You can be as slow as you want. I feel like that's really refreshing to see in a simulation game because I'm so sick of timed quests that take me forever and then I run out of time and it's over and I've done all this work for nothing. So this is definitely a fun one before bed again or just one that you want to take slow and relax and not panic about because there's no time limits and it's brilliant. It's genius. More games like that, please. I feel like witches are all the rage right now. Everywhere in all sorts of media, we're seeing a lot of witches. And I love that personally, because I'm definitely a witch fan. And a lot of people last year were reading The Nature of Witches, and so did I. And we follow Clara, who is an ever witch, meaning she holds the ability to do everything in each season, which is a rarity in her, in her kind. And it means every season she's harnessing power, she's in control a lot, there's a lot of pressure on her, her personality changes every season, it's a lot to deal with. The atmosphere in this book is what I enjoyed most about it. I really enjoyed the beautiful setting that the school was in and seeing the seasons changing. And I really liked seeing the use of elemental magic. When I saw the trailer of Wildflowers, I knew that this was instantly the nature of witches. It was the first thing that came to my mind. I feel like the vibes are just so similar. So at first you play this game and it's just like any other cottage core game. You're farming, you're looking after your animals and you keep up with the day-to-day -day running of the farm as you help your grandmother who can't run it alone anymore. You get to know the residents of the village Fairhaven and learn their stories. Maybe start a romance and settle into your new home. If I'm honest, this would have been enough for me to buy the game alone because I love a farming simulator and they're basically my therapy. But then a twist happens and night comes. And suddenly Tara transforms and becomes a witch, joining in the local coven of witches and you can fly around on your broom, you can brew potions and you can actually transform into your cat self. I have nothing but praise for this game and its originality. It's a fairly new release and there's plenty of updates regularly for you to enjoy. So I would highly recommend this game if you enjoy anything related to witches because I love it. Next we have The Project, which was a lot of people's favourite book. I can't relate because I hated it, but nonetheless. <laughs> so we follow Lo, who has lost her entire family in a car accident and she only has B left. But she is no longer in contact with B as B has joined a community known as the Unity Project. Now Lo has her suspicions about this community because she believes it is a cult. Because it's clearly a cult. And Lo begins to try and uncover the mystery of what is going on here in this community, what's happened to her sister, where she is, why she won't speak to her. And in the end, she realises she will do whatever it takes to get her sister back. Now, you would probably think that I can't give you a cosy game recommendation that is also a cult, but you'd be wrong. Because we have the Cult of the Lamb, where you are a lamb who is also the leader of a cult. I'm not really sure what else I can say about that. You must build your camp and gather resources to craft buildings, perform dark rituals and give sermons. You must cleanse the world of non-believers and defeat rival cult leaders. You must explore five new regions where you are tasked with recruiting new followers to your cult by spreading enlightenment <laughs> and performing more rituals in order to complete the ultimate goal of becoming the mighty lamb god. Mm -hmm. Now this is a cosy game but I wouldn't say it was stress free because there's definitely a lot of pressure put on you by your followers um, to perform and when you're off travelling trying to gain new enlightened people um, <laughs> they expect a lot from you when you're not there and you come back and it's in disarray and you've got to start preaching again. Even though it's very stressful I absolutely love the horror vibes of this it's so dark and creepy but you're also a really cute lamb. This game is so unique, it just keeps me engrossed every time. Now I think everybody on booktube has either read or heard of this book recently, which is Legends and Lattes, <laughs> and I can understand why. 
It's about an assassin orc who is retired and with their retirement money has decided that they want to open a coffee shop. Now this book is 300 pages of pure calm. Now, I understand a lot of people might think this book is boring, but for me personally, getting to read a high fantasy that hasn't got all the stress of the wars and the fighting constantly, it's a dream. And I have a perfect game match for this, and that is Coffee Talk. So you play as a barista in Seattle who runs a late night coffee shop serving coffee to fantastical and human characters. You have to manage the ingredients you have in stock, learn new recipes, and practice designs to make the coffee aesthetic while listening to the problems of the people and trying to provide comfort through the means of a hot beverage. You watch friendships and romances bloom between your patrons and enjoy the lives of all these customers. The cast, the game is a perfect description of human life while using a non-human cast. It's such a beautiful narrative-based game and we're getting Coffee Talk 2 this year, so it's the perfect time to pick this first one up if you haven't already. Okay, look, I'm definitely reaching with the next one, but hear me out, I'll try and explain myself. For the book, we have Be Not Far From Me by Mindy McGuinness. We follow Ashley as she goes on a trip with her friends camping in the mountain. Now, at the beginning of the book, she talks about how the wood feel woods feels more like her home than her actual house does. She's obviously one with nature, and I love that for her. Then she gets to the party where her friends are, and she's having a good time. She's drinking, she's doing her thing, until she comes across her boyfriend with another woman. Now, in her rage, her blind panic rage, which you can understand, she kind of storms off in the woods and falls down a ravine and hurts herself. Now, when she regains consciousness, she kind of realises the severity of her situation because she's on her own, she doesn't know where she is, and she has to start creating this plan of how she's going to get out of where she is when she has no idea where she's going. We follow her through days of trying to navigate this woods while infection spreads through her body from her injury on her leg, and it's a really gross, horrifying depiction of nature. And the game I want to recommend to you is in no way a horror. There is no cheating. There is no severe infection you're trying to escape. Um, it's just a nice game. Instead, it is a beautiful, nice game about a bird who is trying to hike up a mountain. Set in the landscape of Hawk Peak Provincial Park, you play as a bird whose only goal is to get to the peak of the mountain. And you can do this anywhere you choose, be it through the Mark Trails or through the backcountry, in a more haphazard fashion. You can walk, run, fly, climb, whatever you prefer in order to reach your end destination. Along the way, you meet fellow hikers, uncover hidden treasure, simply appreciate the beautiful view. This is a super short but beautiful game. It's so perfect for relaxing. There's no timed quests, there's no defeating monsters, no dungeons, simply a bird and nature. The comparison is a little bit weird, but if you've read the book, you'll know that Ashley continues to talk about the importance of appreciating the beauty of nature around her. And so I feel like this game pushes that a little bit. So it's more of a calm version. <laughs> Next, we have The Cat and the City, which tells the tale of a stray cat who wanders the streets of Tokyo and tells you the story of the residents there. And these stories are then intricately overlapped to create this beautiful interwoven tale. Watch these characters go from strangers to being in different types of relationships is a really magical experience. And even though the cat is always watching from afar, it always feels like he is the reason for these in relationships forming. As though it's just his observations and his actions that create everything that's happening, even though he's just watching. I absolutely love books about cats and I had so many options as to what to choose for this game. The game I want to show you is an odd one. It is called Calico. Now you're going to look at the footage and you're going to be like, mm, what are you talking about? This is a weird game. And it is. It's got a very distinct style to it. The overall aim of the game is simply to rebuild the town's once loved cafe and fill it with adorable fluffy friends that can be found throughout the world. Choose to decorate with your own style and fill it with baked goods and create the perfect environment not only for the little creatures but also the people who come to enjoy the space. This is a completely no stress, low stakes game, so perfect for relaxing whenever you need to come down from a busy day. This is something that when I watched the trailers I really wasn't sure of, but I'm really glad I took the leap because I've really enjoyed the game even if it is a little odd and to be honest getting to ride the capybaras was reason alone enough to buy it. So those are my 10 if you like this book you should like this game recommendations. I really hope that you found something here that you want to play or maybe something that you want to read, maybe vice versa you found something the other way. If you would like another instalment of this or something different like movies or tv shows please let me know, I absolutely love stuff like this. Or if you have anything else that you want to see from me, let me know. And I shall see you in the next video. Thank you so much for watching. Bye.